Another thing a lot of teachers tell me is that, you know, they'll come and say, Jenny, my child has covered all the material now. I don't know what to do next. I've taught them everything. Now that's just not possible. Our mission is not to come into this classroom and present one material after another, after another, after another. Keep in mind, every material has an age. Again, when you do the Montessori Diploma with us, you get a handbook, you get a module that gives you all the lesson plans and every lesson plan has an age. So this is for a two and a half year old child. This is for a three year old child. These are for three and a half and so on. So we do not have to present it too early. I should not be presenting uh, an activity for a four year old child to a two and a half year old child. It may appear that they can physically do it, but the concept will not be internalized. The steps are more. The concentration required is much deeper, which that child will not have. So if I am working with just five or six materials for this child, that means I've got to have a lot of extensions and variations. When I'm with the pink tower, so now you know how to build it this way, okay? Maybe next time you can build it flat on the floor. Maybe we can scatter all the cubes in the environment and we will build it from a distance. Maybe we can build it wearing a blindfold. Maybe we can have base cards. We can draw, you know, trace the shapes and cut them and stick them on a big piece of chart paper. There are a lot of things that you can do, um, which we do teach in our courses, but the internet is also full of ideas of you know how you can vary this material apart from varying you want to extend it in your day-to-day -day life how about we look for cubes when we go out into you know that we're going shopping or we're going to a restaurant show me how many cubes you can find can you find a prism can you match and find me the darkest shade of green there are always ways that you can extend the knowledge that we get from the sensorial activities to outside of the shelf. Our learning must not stop at the shelf. Let me tell you a very funny story. Some years ago, I had taken one of my sons shopping and uh, I was buying a pair of shoes. And I went to one of these department stores that has all these shoes and they have grouped them by color, all right? So while I was waiting for my shoes and trying on for size, my son was in the area busying himself and he comes to me after a few minutes really excited He goes, you've got to come and see this you have to see this so i said what what is it and he drags me to one of the racks the shoe shelves and he says look i've graded all the red shoes from lightest to darkest and he was so proud of himself now here's a little boy who's three and a half to four years and he's messed up the storekeeper's display I should have been embarrassed, I could have been embarrassed, but for me, I was the proudest mama in the world. I thought, yes, Montessori works everywhere. My child is applying his knowledge in the big world outside us. That is exactly what you're supposed to be doing with this knowledge. And let me tell you something, he graded it perfectly. It was beautiful. I could have shouted it from the mountaintops. So, Take that knowledge, whatever it is, and extend it into your day-to-day -day activities. You're in a shop and the child is trying on clothes. You have to buy clothes for your child. Which one feels soft to you? Which one is feeling a bit rough? What do you think will feel nicer on your skin? You're giving them autonomy, which is leading to their independence, and you're combining sensorial skills. Isn't it wonderful?